Hello, welcome to the show. Men's soccer also starts league play this weekend. There have been two really good stories in the pre-conference part of the season. There is Denver, undefeated in seven matches. They are up to number 12 this week in the national top 25 coaches poll. And then there is Omaha. The Mavericks have won six of their first seven matches. They are in the top 25 this week, coming in at number 23. And here is the latest victory for the Mavericks. They were at home against Bradley on Saturday. And look at the goal by Logan Mendez, Nebraska kid from Grand Island, his third goal of the season. Mavericks lead 1-0, and the match is tied 1-1 at the half. Bradley takes a 2-1 lead early in the second half, and then in the 87th minute, Mendez to Mark Moulton to Noor Hamadi, and that ties it with three minutes left in regulation. Omaha with a chance to win it in regulation time. 17 seconds left, and that is off the corner. Header off the bar and bounces out. So they go to overtime, tied 2-2. And then at the very end of double overtime, here is John Green with the call. 16 seconds to go. Another Michael blast. Jaime will take a blast. Deflected, and it goes oh. just wide. That was not far. Just it's going to be wide. a goal kick or a corner kick. Corner. It's a corner kick with five seconds yeah. left. Mendez launches oh. it into the box. Chance of the back post. It goes in. The Mavericks win it in the final second of overtime. Literally. Unbelievable. Wow. Exciting times for this Omaha men's team right now. And what even makes this an even better story is the fact that this Omaha men's program has only been in existence for five years now. Up until 2011, there was no such thing as men's soccer at the University of Nebraska Omaha. The athletic department was going through an overhaul. Omaha had announced its intention to move up to Division I and join the Summit League. At the same time, they had discontinued football and wrestling and needed a men's sport that would fit in well on a growing metropolitan campus. I think the first thing we had to do was uh, find, find players and find uh, games. Uh, we had, uh, had about a month or so to get some opponents on the schedule and find some players that wanted to play Division I soccer. My first year is when we officially started the program. Coach got a bunch of local, mostly local guys, a couple international guys together at kind of like the last minute because, I mean, he only had three months to recruit. And so we kind of got the team here like within the first summer. And so for me, he sold me on the vision of what this program was going to be. And I just trusted him and put my belief in him that, you know, that he's, if he says he can do this, you know, I got to trust that he can do it. Logan Mendez has been here as long as the program has been a program. He led the state of Nebraska in scoring as a senior at Grand Island High School and then had no hesitation about coming to a college that was just starting soccer. It was always my dream to be D1, and so I was, one of the, I was the first one out of my high school to be a Division I athlete uh, for the soccer program, that is. And so just the thought of being able to play D1 against Creighton, against California schools, I mean, that sold me more than anything of just like, not being able to play postseason that that started coming later on we were just kind of down about that but I think that first couple years we almost just cared about being at a D1 school I mean it's big for anybody especially in our sport our goal is to we want to build this program off uh, Omaha kids and Nebraska kids I think about half our team is with uh, uh, some you know they have some kind of local ties and then we as you mentioned we'll, we'll spread out a little bit we'll uh, stay regionally and recruit Midwestern kids and then we branch out to the West Coast or East Coast or even internationally um, with our uh, with our name now. We all kind of have this mentality especially since we're in the Midwest in Nebraska no one really takes Midwest soccer as serious as we feel like it should be taken. Well for Mendez and his fellow fifth year seniors the struggle of starting from the bottom and rising to the top has been well worth the work and the wait. And for Coach Mims, it has been a great ride so far, being at the wheel of a program that has accelerated from 1 to 100 in a hurry. I don't think we're at 100 yet, but we definitely started at 1, <laughs> for sure. Um, you know, we're getting there slowly, but surely, uh, you know, I think uh, wins and losses is one thing uh, to judge it by. And I think we've gone from, you know, one win to 10 wins last year. So I know we're going in the right direction, but a lot of different things that, uh, you know, come outside just the wins and losses, but um, yeah, we're 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 going the right direction. That's for sure. 
Well, Logan Mendez just happens to be the Summit League Offensive Player of the Week this week. First time in his career that he's been honored. He had the goal and the two assists in that win over Bradley. Defensive Player of the Week is Dan Jackson at Denver. First time award for him as well. The senior keeper was 2-0, shut out St. Louis, and then a 2-1 win over Utah Valley as Denver extends the nation's longest home unbeaten streak right now to 22 Games And Denver opens the Summer League play uh, this Saturday at Western Illinois. Omaha is at IUPUI. And Oral Roberts will start out the Summer League season at Eastern Illinois. Volleyball coming up next. Denver warming up for the start of Summer League play with a three-match sweep at home over the weekend. We'll show you why the Pioneers are the pick to win the league again this year. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau, and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Welcome back now to volleyball. Denver tied for the Summit League regular season championship last year and then went on to win the league tournament championship. The Pioneers lost their setter and their best defender, but they have their top three hitters back this year, and they are picking up where they left off last season. Well, Denver head coach Jesse Mahoney has his team off to another good start. They picked up three more wins this weekend, posting the Denver Invitational. And up first is Illinois-Chicago. And for Denver, that is uh, number 14, six foot three sophomore Kayla Principato. She led the team in this match with 10 kills to go along with five blocks. Setter Monique Domi with 18 assists, and they beat Illinois Chicago 25 23, 25 19, and 25 20 in the first match. Up next, University of Montana on Saturday. And Denver again, Moni Corriedo leads the way with 11 kills for the Pioneers. And they will win this one in four sets. Pishu Boteju dishing out 22 assists for Denver. Cassidy Rook leads the defense with 20 kills in this one. Ruth Aco or 20 digs, I should say. Ruth Okoye with a kill there. And they beat Montana in four sets. And they turn around in the tournament championship and face Abilene Christian. And Denver will take this one three games to none. Koreedu leads the way again with 10 kills. Domi dishes out 22. Three assists in this one. She also leads the team with uh, 12 digs. Beautiful back set there from Domi. Ruth Okoye leads the team in blocks with six. And the Pioneers beat Illinois Chicago. They beat Montana and they beat Abilene Christian to win the Denver Invitation. Well, Denver is 11-3 right now. North Dakota State goes 9-4 in the pre-league season. And IUPUI is 9-5 right now. And the Jags have the players of the week. Caitlin Hickey on offense, the senior hitter, was named to the all-tournament team at the Marquette Invitational. She had 26 kills in a win over Albany and 22 in a win over Wichita State. Hickey is second in the league right now in kills per set. And her teammate, Courtney Halter, is the Defensive Player of the Week, leads the league in digs per set right now. She had 63 of them in the Marquette Tournament in three matches. And this should be good. IUP will, uh, IUPUI will open Summit League play on Sunday at home against Denver. Denver beat the Jaguars in the League Tournament Championship the last time that they faced each other. Well, up next, women's soccer. And the Omaha men, not the only ones with the dramatic golden goal over the weekend. The Maverick women get theirs against Northern Colorado. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League. On Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau, and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Well, now to women's soccer. South Dakota State, North Dakota State, Oral Roberts, and IUPUI all above the 500 mark uh, right now in the preseason. Summer League play does get going next weekend. And in the meantime, here is the best of this past week from Brookings and Fort Wayne and Omaha and Vermilion. On Friday in Brookings with Northern Iowa in town to take on the Jackrabbits. Jack attack here early. Alyssa Brazel looking for Jenny Sislo. A little too much on the lead there, and the UNI keeper reels that one in. Later in the second half, though, 
Still scoreless. Another chance. Potterville again, though. Shot too high. Julia Lamb has got a rebound, but that is denied as well. And go late in the second half. Still scoreless. 45 seconds to go. Lamb intercepts a clear out by UNI. Fakes out a defender. Puts it up and over the top of the outstretched hand of Whitney Blunt in the goal. And the Jacks win this one in dramatic fashion. One to nil. And then on a breezy Sunday in Brookings, South Dakota State hosting North Dakota in this one. Potterville again a little high. Olivia Swenson with the save for UND. At the other end for South Dakota State, Nicole Inski shuffling the feet, keeping the net clean with that save. Still scoreless in the second half, but Potterveld will get the winner here. Danny Patterson with an assist, and the Jacks hang on and win this one by a one to nothing score as well. Meanwhile, in Fort Wayne, the Mastodons putting the uh, ball in the net frequently in this match against Taylor of Indiana. They had six different players score. Brick Bisher with that first one, and then Cassidy Simpkins scores a short time later on an assist from Mason Whitman. On the next rush, Aaron Gill punches that in about five minutes later, and the Mastodons get their first win of the season, and they tie a team record with the seven goals in that match. In Omaha, beautiful Italian-made pitch at Coniglia Field in Omaha, and the Mavs hosting Colorado State on Friday. They miss an opportunity early on there. At the other end, though, Colorado State misses as well as Taylor Nelson sends that one too high. Second half now, still scoreless. Shot from deep, and that's poked away by Catlin Schockenmeyer. And they go scoreless into double overtime. The Rams with a corner kick. Omaha fails to clear this thing out. Shot from about 25 yards straight away. Gets a little love from the post. And Colorado State wins this one one to nothing in double overtime. So that was not the dramatic victory for Omaha we were talking about. But this is the Mavs bouncing back on Sunday, hosting Northern Colorado. And second half, scoreless here. Abby Meter to Natalie Johnson. A drive, but still scoreless. They go to overtime. And then a pretty amazing sequence here with Romero to meter and back to Emily Romero. She will cross it to Chelsea Roloff, who's hanging out back here. Roloff with one chance, denied right back to her, left foot and in. Roloff with the game winner, and the Mavericks win one to nothing over Northern Colorado. And South Dakota at home against Northern Iowa on Sunday. They will get a lone goal in this match from Danielle Anderson. And win it one to nothing. South Dakota had some travel trouble getting back from Idaho just to play this match. We didn't get home till four in the morning, so the fact that we came out with the energy that we did and the way we played today, I love that. Well, the women's soccer players of the week are Chrissy Kirkhoff from IUPUI, sophomore from Indianapolis, had two goals, two assists, in two wins. She leads the league in assist right now with six, and that is already tied for the single season record at IUPUI. And you saw Catlin Schockenmeyer in the highlight. She is the defensive POW for the second time in the last three weeks. Ten saves for Schockenmeyer in that shutout win over Northern Colorado. We got cross country coming up next. A big win for the IUPUI men running with the big dogs in Indiana and outrunning all of them. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau, and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Welcome back. There is a huge cross-country event in the state of Indiana every fall called the Indiana Intercollegiates. And there are some very good men's cross-country teams in the state, including the University of Indiana, the number 10 ranked team in the nation right now. But last Friday night, the IUPUI men laid claim to state supremacy with their first ever Indiana Intercollegiates championship. The Jaguars posted a team score of 40. They beat Indiana State by three points and beat Indiana by five. Robert Murphy and Joey Zelinski finished third and fourth overall in the Division I race. Murphy covers the 8,000 meters in 25, 42.9, with Zelinski just a couple of seconds behind. 
Damon Pruitt, Dakota Dubs, and Max Zamija all finish in the top 15 for IUPUI. And the Jaguars have now won their first two meets of the season. They will run at the Notre Dame Invitational coming up next week. And by the way, Robert Murphy is the Summit League Cross Country Men's Athlete of the Week after that performance, and he is joined by Leah Brooks of IUPUI. The senior finished ninth overall at those Indiana Intercollegiates, and she ran the second fastest 5K of her career in just under 18 and a half minutes. Oh, when we come back, the trials and tribulations of the transition to Division I at Omaha, how athletics almost went away for good, and how Trev Alberts and his coaches and kids are surviving and thriving now. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort, Dakota Land Honda, and South Dakota Corn. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Sioux Falls Convention and Visitors Bureau, and your Heartland Chevy dealers. Welcome back. The transition period is over now for the University of Nebraska Omaha. The Mavericks are able to compete this season in every Summit League postseason tournament. And we couldn't say that for the last four years while the Mavericks were going through the transition to Division I. We went to Omaha this week to get a feel for what life was like when the school briefly considered not having any sports at all to what it's like now that the Mavs are a full-fledged member of Division I. Back in 2010, leadership at Nebraska Omaha started looking at whether the NCAA Division II level for athletics was the right fit for the university. Men's hockey was a viable Division I sport, but the rest of the athletic department was struggling to compete financially. So athletic director Trev Alberts spent 16 months with community leaders and campus leaders trying to figure out the best course to move forward and how they could stay in Division II. And the answer was that that was not the answer. Uh, we were in a difficult market with the Huskers and Creighton and, and the College World Series and, and everything else. And, and um, so, uh, frankly, we looked at, at whether or not we should have an athletic department at all for a month, uh, which was a little scary. And, uh, you know, we recognized that we'd be the first and only public um, institution with over 15,000 students to not sponsor sports through the NCAA. So that, uh, that didn't take too long. And so then the question was, we need to be Division I. The reality then was, how do we make it work? For starters, they signed a hefty check and joined the Summit League in all sports except hockey. Alberts and UNO Chancellor John Christensen loved wrestling and football, but made the unpopular and difficult decision to end those programs. They added men's soccer and men's golf and set about figuring out what kind of Division I institution they needed to be. The fact of the matter is, given the resources um, and given where we're located within this state, um, this is who we ought to be. Uh, we're serving our student athletes today in a way that we're really proud of. Just five years ago, the school did not have a compliance department or academic support for athletes or a physical therapist, but they do now. And when it came to the transition, Albert says that one positive of going through the process was that it brought the academic side of campus closer to the athletic side. One had to support the other. From that aspect, I think it was pretty positive. Uh, the other aspect, frankly, to wait four years to be able to, to compete for a conference championship was, was very difficult. And I, I've apologized to a lot of student athletes. Um, and, uh, you know, I didn't feel good about it. But uh, the fact of the matter is, we, we got through it. And I, I believe some of those student athletes who fought with us through it, who didn't get a chance to compete for a championship, but didn't quit on UNO, didn't quit on their education. Uh, they're going to benefit long term from it. They went through a lot of adversity, persevered through it, and uh, I'm really proud of them because they really laid the, you know, the, um, the framework for what I think is going to be a successful first year as an eligible institution. Turns out, though, that getting through those four years was not all bad. Coaches still sold a vision, and recruits still wanted to come to Omaha. We explained to them our vision and where we were going, and fortunately, a lot of the recruits we've had over the last couple of years, um, like uh, you know, our freshman class now, is never even going to have to play um, in the transition period. So we never found that it was a deterrent. We just pitched where we were going. It was discussed, but I don't think it was an issue. No, I think it was like really exciting that they were in transition because I wanted to be a part of that. So I think it was a really great thing, and 
influenced me on coming here. You know, people asked about that in the recruiting process of, well, did it hurt your recruiting because you're not in postseason? You know, for I, I can't speak for every sport, but for our sport, we just we never really talked about it. You know, all I you know talked about in recruiting was um, trying to develop them and trying to help them reach their goals uh, off the field and on the field. And on the field, the possibility of postseason play this year will add a little extra excitement. One of the major things it would do is just bring more awareness to the to the program. Really, I mean. You know, we have, there's a great program 45 minutes away, Nebraska. Um, it'd be really nice to be grouped in with them, you know, and just have some fan supporters down there. And I mean, we already have, we have great friends who, who stand behind us, but just to, you know, be noticed on a national level, like, wow, there's a good baseball team in Omaha where the College World Series is held, that's pretty awesome. You work through the entire season. The conference season is a grind. and. And at the end of the year, the past two seasons, we've really surged at the end. And to be able to take that momentum into a conference tournament and say, hey, we have the same chance that everybody else does to go to the NCAA tournament, it's a big deal. And when we've, as a program and as a university, never been to the NCAA tournament in, in women's basketball, to be the first to do that is a big opportunity. Our thanks to Trev Alberts and Shad Beam and Bonnie Ryan and everybody at Omaha for all their help. Uh, remember, league play gets going in men's soccer and volleyball this weekend. We'll run it down next week on Inside the Summer League.